Greetings and welcome back to another walkthrough. We're looking at Chapter 10F, Beverage Supplies. So let's begin. First, we're going to download our files. Let's click on our Excel Chapter 10 folder. And make sure we select 10F, Beverage Supplies Homework. We're going to download our materials. And remember, do not download all files. Click on each file individually. And go ahead and open up your student file. Make sure you hit enable for editing. And I'm gonna go ahead and make this bigger for it, make it a little easier to see, zoom in a little bit. And here we are. So on our beverage supplies inventory worksheet, it wants us to insert a table using the range A7 to E30. So I'm going to highlight our A7 down to E30. I'm going to highlight this range right here. And I'm going to go to the insert tab and under my tables group, click on tables. Make sure that you have a check mark here that says my table has headers and go ahead and hit OK. So now we've take the, uh, taken this range and we've made it into a table, which makes it a little easier for us to do some advanced sorting uh, and manipulation of the data. So now it says from the guest worksheet, it wants us to copy the range A1 to E20. So let's go ahead and come down here to our guests worksheet down here at the bottom. And let's highlight A1 all the way down to E20. And it wants us to copy that. So hold down your control key and hit C to copy. If you're a Mac user, you can come to the home tab here under our clipboard. You can hit copy here as well. And it wants us to paste this into cell F6 of the Beverage Supplies Inventory Worksheet. So let's go ahead and click on our Beverage Supplies Inventory Worksheet here. Let's go ahead and go to the F6. So let's go ahead and click on cell F6. And go ahead and hold down the control key and hit V to paste. Or once again, for my Mac users, come to your home tab and you can use the paste button here. Uh, for my Mac users, you can also do command V, uh, command C and command V uh, should do the same functions as control. So now that we have this in here, it wants us to format the data in F7 to J25 as a table. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight F7 all the way down to J25. And just like we did with the last table, I'm going to go to the Insert tab. From the Insert tab, under Table, I'm going to click on Table. And make sure it says My Table Has Headers and hit OK. And here it is. Now I have two tables side by side. It says for this table here, it wants me to apply a medium 12 table style. So I'm going to come up here to my Table Design tab here under my Table Styles. And I'm going to click the down arrow with the line above it. And it wants me to do a medium 12. So I'm going to go under medium. And I want to hover until I find 12, which is this gold color right here. And it also wants me to auto fit columns H through I. So I'm going to come up here, I'm going to highlight, I'm going to hover over my H. I'm going to click hold and drag all the way over to I. Then I'm going to go in between H and I. Uh, notice when I go between these two, I get these two arrows pointing away from each other. And I'm going to double click really fast. And that should auto fit both of them for me. All right, for step number five, it wants me to sort the beverage tables type staff table by item number. But it also wants me to sort uh, by the purchase price as well as a second level. 
So I'm going to come up here to my home tab. Make sure I'm clicked somewhere in this table right here. I'm going to come up here to my home tab under my editing group. I'm going to click on sort filter and do a custom sort. So I'm first going to sort by item number A to Z. Then I'm going to add a level. And in this level, I want to sort by purchase price. And I want to do largest to smallest. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And it's going to sort everything first by item and then by purchase price. And it wants me to do the same thing for uh, this table as well. So let's go ahead and click on the guests table. Home tab, come up here to our editing group. Click on sort filter, custom sort. I'm going to sort it by item number. I'm going to add a level, and then I'm going to sort again by purchase price, largest to smallest, and hit OK. Now it says for step number seven, select the range E8 to E30, and apply conditional formatting to the range using the three arrows uh, directional icon set. So let's go ahead and highlight from E8 down to E30. Once I've highlighted this range, I'm going to come up here to my Home tab under my Styles grouping. And notice I have Conditional Formatting. I'm going to click on Conditional Formatting. We're going to go by Icon Sets. And it wants me to apply the three arrows colored. So let's find out where the three arrows colored right here, this very first format. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. For step number eight, it wants me to use the quick analysis to apply the default conditional formatting icon set to J8 to J25. So I'm going to come over here to click on J8, go all the way down to J25. Notice that I have this little icon for my Windows users. For Mac users, you do have a, uh, uh, a different set of instructions. You need to apply the three arrows. But for my Windows users, you should have this quick analysis box here. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And under formatting, I want to go to icon set. And notice how it selected the exact same one that I already applied. So very quickly uh, copied that formatting over. So now for step number nine, in range C8 to C30, it wants me to create a new conditional formatting rule. So let's go ahead and highlight C8 all the way down to C30. Once I've highlighted this range, I'm going to come up to my styles group here. I'm going to click on conditional formatting and I want to do a new rule. Under new rule, I'm going to use a formula to determine which cells to format. And that formula is in step number nine. It's equal sign. 8, I'm sorry, equal sign C8, equal sign, open quotation marks, capital J for juice, close your quotation marks. Once I have my value here, which just says that this, if this cell equals to juice, we're going to do the formatting. So I'm going to come to my format right here. I'm going to click on the format button and I want to format it with bold italics and I want to select a red font. So let's find the red color font, which is this under standard colors. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and go ahead and hit OK again. And notice now if it says juice, it highlights it, bolds it, and makes it a red color. So now for step number 10, it wants us to delete the guests worksheet. So I'm going to come down here to my guests worksheet. I'm going to right click on it. Make sure you right click on guests and hit delete. It will say, uh, it will give us an error message or a, a pop-up menu that says, do you want to do this? Yes, we want to delete it. And now it's gone. It says from our backstage view. So for my Windows users, I need to come up here to me to my file tab. 
for my Mac users, it's probably all the way up at the top at your main toolbar. I want to go to my info group, so I'm going to click on info. It wants me to check the access uh, check accessibility command. So I'm going to go ahead and find where it says check accessibility. To do that, I'm going to click on check for issues. I'm going to ch click on check accessibility. And a side pane is going to show up and it's going to give me some errors. So it says that I'm missing alternative text. So I'm going to click on the down arrow and it says picture five. So I'm going to go ahead and click on picture five. And it looks like this right here is picture five. It wants me to put in alt text. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this down arrow right here. And I'm going to click on add a description. And right here under alt text, I want to type in iced tea glasses. Capitalize the I for iced. Once I'm done with that, I can go ahead and exit out of it. And I can go ahead and exit out of my accessibility checker. And now on step number 12, it wants me to group both worksheets together. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on one of my sheets and I'm going to hit select all sheets. Now both sheets are selected. What I do to one sheet, it'll do to the other sheet automatically. It wants me to go to my page layout tab from my page layout tab. It wants me to go to page setup by clicking on this little dialog box button right here. And I'm going to click on header footer. It wants me to add a custom header. So I'm going to click on custom header. And it says in the middle section, the center section, it wants me to add a logo, a picture. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to hover over these icons. I want to find out where it says picture. And right here it is, insert picture. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to go from file. I'm going to hit browse. Should be under my downloads folder. And there it is, my E10F logo. I'm going to click on it, hit insert. And it's going to go ahead and insert my picture and my header. It says in the right header section, so I'm going to click on my right header section here. It wants me to type in created by Pat Shepard. Make sure you pay attention to your capitalizations. Go ahead and hit OK. Now it wants me to go to my, oh, there's my icon right there. Now it wants me to go to my custom footer. And in my custom footer in the left section, it wants me to put the file name. And go ahead and hit OK. And then go ahead and hit OK. So there we have it. We have our logo in there. We have our custom footer. So now it wants me to move to cell A1. I'm just going to go ahead and click on cell A1. And it says with the two uh, worksheets still grouped, it wants me to change the orientation to landscape. So under my page layout tab here, I'm going to change my orientation to landscape. I want to change the page width to one. So right here where it says scale to fit, I'm going to click on this little icon right here, my page setup dialog box again, and I'm going to click on fit to one by one. It wants me to center my page horizontally. So I'm going to click on margins and center on page horizontally and go ahead and hit OK. And now it wants me to go back to the backstage view and put in my properties. So I'm going to hit the file tab and click on info. And here I'm going to click on show all properties under tags where it says add a tag. I'm going to type in beverage supplies. And in the subject box, I'm going to type in CGS and I'm going to make sure that uh, right here where it says author, I'm going to right click on go series, hit remove person, and I'm going to type in my name and make sure my name is under the author. And now we are done. I'm going to make sure I save my file. I'm going to save my file again for good measure.
I'm going to go ahead and minimize it. I'm going to exit out of my upload and my downloading starting materials. I'm going to choose my file. I'm going to go to my downloads folder. And there it is. There's my file. I'm going to click on it, hit open, upload, and submit for grading. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this tab. I'm going to come back to my content here. I'm going to click on my three dots, hit view submissions. And it looks like I got a 100%. You can go ahead and click on your submission and you can check to see if you did anything wrong. Feel free, fix whatever it is that you got wrong and submit it for a better grade. That concludes this walkthrough. And like always, have a wonderful day.